Kings of Leon. California waiting. Steve, the public have been waiting for us to return. Well, that's true enough. All right. Yeah. They had the best of. Oh, last I bet that week. Was a joy. They had Camfield and us without Carl the week before, but it's uh, been a while since we've all been together. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me is Steve Merchant, and over there, with his little sunburnedy baldy head, little Carl <laughs> Pilkington. Whee! All right. Yeah. That, that wasn't Steve slapping me head then, by the way. <laughs> no, that was just him clapping right. at, like, Steve Wright in the afternoon. It's a great cause show. He's, cause he's so- it is a good show. Yeah. He's so pleased that we're- we're a posse. Yeah. And we're all back together. I th three holidays Carl's had this year. Last year. Yeah, yeah. Three, yeah. I'd love to have three holidays. You've got to start putting the work no, in I there. I had two it, holidays then. No, you had three holidays. You went away with, uh, Suzanne and her parents. Yeah, well that doesn't count. It does count. If you book, if you book two weeks off the firm and you go away and you go, how was your holiday going? Well, I didn't really count, it wasn't a really good holiday. Can I have them days back, please? <laughs> you, oh. My New Year's resolution is to be nicer to you, but well, talk done. sense. Well done, you've already broken that. No, but talk sense. Talk sense. You've had three holidays this year. And I'm just saying, you, you're in your thirties now, and thirties is when you should be really putting the work in. That's true enough. To reap the benefits in your forties, fifties, sixties, seventies, eighties, nineties, and a hundred. <laughs> Carl, what's your new year resolution? What about think before you speak? <laughs> <laughs> it's worth- I mean, See, I'm it. allowed to laugh. I'm allowed to laugh at things other people say, Carl. That one- <laughs> That is a good suggestion! How was your holiday, Carl? Uh, it was alright. Right, brilliant. <laughs> but that, I don't see, on the kind of, on these, on the ratio of, uh, good to bad in Carl's mind, that might be amazing, because we never it might be amazing, seen might the basis of anything. I'll tell you what, can we have, uh, you know, a cracking little tune, and then come back and hear about Carl's holiday? Oh, I'd love to do that. Let's really. keep it tight. Mm -hmm. Let me tear us apart by Joy Division. Now, I can't put my finger on it. But that doesn't sound like the original, and no. it's off a compilation. It sounded a bit fast. I think the vocal was slightly different. If anyone can, you know, put me out of misery, I, I think it might be in a session of the time or something. Carl, is it a New Year resolution for you? Another one? Uh, maybe when we ask you to get a song, get the original uh, single version. I could be and wrong, not some but, uh, but session. yeah, it does seem different, doesn't it's it? Very odd. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we just remember it wrongly. Mm. But anyway, that's XFM for you. 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkerton. Carl, you went to Lanzarote, yeah. people said don't go to Lanzarote, they told you it was Lanzarote, they told you were they right or wrong? They were right, yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's a bit ropey, yeah. Is it why? Just, uh, out there. If it wasn't for the, for the volcano they had, it'd be knackered. <laughs> That's their- that's their big draw, is that's, it? That's- that's it, basically. That's all they've got going for them. When you landed, was it really hot? Did you- initially, were you quite excited? You were thinking this no, is it okay? It was warm. It's just, uh, you know, we can't complain about the weather. The weather- weather was alright. Sure. You know what I mean? That's what I went for, but it'd be nice if- if they just was something else. Yeah. What did you do all day, then? Did you read your original book? Uh, no. I didn't- didn't read that. I read that book. Do you know the book that I bought and all the chapters were messed up? Oh, yeah. But I, I bought a better version of that. All right. And I read that. Excellent. And then, uh... Did it make more sense in order? Yeah, a lot easier to follow. Yeah. And then we went, went and had a look at the volcanoes and that. They've got 36 of them to look at. <laughs> How many did you look at before you realised that you've, you know, pretty much, you've seen one volcano, you've seen them all? Probably about six or seven. Really? Yeah. And then when you got to the eighth, you thought, now I know what this is going to be, Suzanne. This is going to be like a mountain with a hole in the top. Yeah. Really? But it happened years ago as well. It's like, just keep a couple, fill the rest in, tidy it up. <laughs> fill the so, rest in! Yeah, no, well, yeah. getting some builders. No, seriously though. Okay, four million trap. tons of concrete, please. They're an absolute death trap. <laughs> yeah, what, well, yeah. What do you mean, fill them in? Do you know what a volcano is? It's just old, isn't it? That's happened. Well, it's more than the hole. It's more a portal to the magma in the centre of the earth. Back in 1730 it happened, and they still haven't sorted it out. Well, when you say it happened, Volcanoes were made a lot longer ago no, no, no. than 1730. No, but, but the one that did Lanzarote in. Right. Sort it out. <laughs> what do you suggest? Well, How can they all... fill it in? It's joined, it's all joined. No, but what I'm and saying the, is- uh, it was The a, big it was... plates of the earth are all joined, it was all the magma's joined. It? With the- with the trade centre thing, that happened, they cleaned it up, sorted it out, they've moved on. That's what I'm saying. Whereas Lanzarote have just gone, leave it. It happened back in no, 1730. you misunderstand me. How, in the name of God, 
can you fill in the volcano, you ignorant twit? No, but it's not just the, the holes, they've actually left the lava everywhere. That's what I mean. It's not just the big holes, there's lava everywhere. But it's m molten rock. They can't just p pick it up like they're- like a carpet. Put it in the holes, the holes are there ready, just push it all in. <laughs> <laughs> That's what ah! I'm saying. Ah! So, uh, what, um, what exactly is there then? Is it just a kind of moon-like kind of surround with just kind of dust and rock? That's exactly- and... what, you see, I was there when the Mars thing all oh, went wrong. Yeah. I would've just sent a camera crew there. <laughs> filmed a bit of that, <laughs> right? Yeah. And say, here we are, this yeah. is it. Yeah. Ignore the little coffee shop in the background, yeah. right? <laughs> this is Mars, cos that's- that's where it's like, just loads of dust. Yeah. Uh, holes everywhere. <laughs> Tidy it up. Anything little little round-headed aliens yeah, complaining. Yeah. Winging. Just, just like Mars. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, is there any- what's the best bit about the holiday? Come on, pretend you're Judith Chalmers. I have been doing. I would have done all that, I would have said that. Don't bother. Well, I mean, the hotel was good. Yeah? That was alright. What uh, was that like? It's alright. Just, you know, clean. That's all you want, isn't it? See, that's not quite what Judith Chalmers does. She doesn't go, what's the hotel like? All right, yeah, clean, isn't it? All right. Well, what was it like? Was it, what, what was it? Three star? Four star? Does that have a swimming pool? What was yeah, the room I'd, like? Yeah, had a swimming pool and that. Yeah? Um, yeah, it's good. <laughs> if, you know, I think it was one of the better ones on the island. Okay. Um. Nightlife? Uh, Clubs, wasn't really, bars? wasn't really any, there was a bar, there was some bands playing. Yeah. Uh, not very good. Um, food. Food got a bit boring. Yeah. It was always the same food every night, but they sort of themed it and made out as if it was different. So, like, on Mexican night, it'd be chicken with a nacho on it. <laughs> right. Right. And Chinese night, sort of chicken with a little prawn cracker on it and stuff. <laughs> sure. But that got a bit boring. Um, that's me just turning on my phone, because uh, I want to read to you a text. Right. That I got from Carl. I think you've sort of set up the holiday in in this text, don't you? Do you remember I it? I can't remember. Let's have a look. Let's have a little look. Let's Incidentally, what did uh, Suzanne, your girlfriend, make of it? Uh, Similar view to you? That they should fill in the, uh, the holes? Yeah, it's just that thing, you see, I went on a coach trip, right, and you go and see the volcanoes. Like I say, there's 36 of them. Yeah. Um, which, you know, how many do you need? And, and when, when we're on the coach going round all these volcanoes, <laughs> the fella on the front's going and, uh, look out your left window at the moment and there's a, there's a volcano. And, uh, if you quickly look out of the, the right-hand side there, there's, a, there's another one. <laughs> right. And on the left, he's just like, alright, we've seen it. <laughs> sure. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that, yeah. that tri I mean, we'll talk about that trip in a bit. Right, this is the text I got from Carl, right? Alright. Been up to a volcano. Been in some den ar dead artist's house who built his house in the lava. They said they would show me science with volcanoes, but all they did was chuck some water in a in a hole, and it shot up in the air. No dwarves in the canteen, no scousers here, but there is a Swede woman with a big head. She looks effing gormless with a cap on. <laughs> All right? So a little reference there to... A Swede woman? What's, what's that mean? Do you mean Swedish? Yeah. Or she looked like a vegetable? No, uh, a uh, Swedish woman. Hmm. But they've all got sort of... Quite big bill, aren't they? And I sent, I sent him a text, oh well, it's just good to be on holiday because, you know, I'm working. Uh, he sent back, so am I. Just been watching Sky News. There is a school for monkeys who want to get a band together. <laughs> <laughs> is that monkey news for later? Oh My Corazon by Tim Burgess. I can't get enough of that. I love that chorus. Mm -hmm. On XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant and little Carl Pilkington. But it was a nice holiday. Yeah, it's alright. It's just, uh, you know, I went there to relax and that. Exactly. Did a little bit of that. Uh, trying to think of some new, you know, features and stuff. Sure, always working, always working. Um, Three holidays a year, Jesus. Oh, well, I'm not really saying oh, much. It's all but, uh, holidays, one, really. one big sort of like work it's thing to me and Steve. Yeah. Holidays, isn't it? Yeah. Work hard, you need the holidays. Uh, so, yeah, the, the, the things that annoyed me was like, you, you get bored sat around the pool after a couple of days. I'd read my book. Yeah. Uh, 
you know, there wasn't much going on on the- No, there any crabs to throw sand, that was no there? No crabs or anything, they mm. wouldn't bother with Lanzarote, right? <laughs> so, uh, decided to go on a little, little trip, that's when I saw the, the volcanoes and that, 36 of them. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> we go on the trip, and the thing that annoys me, it does happen every holiday that you go on, if you go on a sort of a package thing, mm -hmm. you have these trips, right? And you pay about 40 odd quid and they give you some wine, so it make it feel like you, you're getting your money's worth. But, uh... How many of these trips have you been on then? Uh, four, Loads. Three, four, probably about 12. Four. More holidays than I've had. Go on. Yeah, I'll, uh... Yeah, so go anyway, on. So you're on the, on the coach, right? And they take you... For the volcanoes, they took us in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Right? There's nothing else around there. Sure. It's, it like, like I say, it's like Mars, but with holes in the ground. Yeah. Right? And, uh... They sort of drop you off and they go, right, everybody, uh, see you back here in an hour. Uh, there's loads of volcanoes for you to look at, uh, and a coffee shop over there. And you know for a fact, right, you don't need an hour there. You could just say, well, just keep the engine running because <laughs> I'll have a look in this hole, we'll get back on, give us five yeah. minutes. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. Don't need an hour. Absolutely. Yeah. But you know that they've got something going on. It's a backhand that definitely. What, with the coffee shop? Definitely, definitely, definitely yeah. They, 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 yeah, they, they go there. And they get everyone to have an ice cream and a coffee, and yeah. they, they, you know, they sit down and have a fag talking to the bloke. Yeah, yeah and it's like, yeah, cousin. Yeah. Have you How much was the coffee? Was it probably about, probably about three, uh, each euro, so I think it was three fifty. Sure. Yeah, Which yeah, is, yeah. I don't know, what, that's about two and a half quid, and yeah, that's they stitched you up. Well, I remember we were on a, it was a family trip to France once, we went to Paris, we got a coach coming back from Paris to one of the ferries, one of the ports, Calais or wherever it was, coach trip, it was quite a long coach trip, and at one point we were thinking, this is all, we're on the motorway, this is fine, we're making good progress, suddenly we came off the motorway, we must have gone like 40 minutes out of our way, ended up in this street, this street, completely empty, little French town, and uh, it's piped outside this, what appears to be a restaurant, and a guy jumps on, dressed like a butlin's red coat. He's French, but he's putting on a kind of English accent. He goes, hello, oh, thank you very much, top of the morning, good morning, hello. Um, uh, come in, we've got food, drink, eh, go upstairs, we've got rooms if you want to have a rest, eh, or play around. No, it's up to you. And uh, we all had to funnel off this thing into this restaurant, and this one family went, well, we don't want to go in the restaurant. We've brought sandwiches, we just want to get to the port, we're not interested. And they said, well, you've got to come in the restaurant. They went, we don't <laughs> want to come in the restaurant. So the guy said, well, I'll have to lock you in the coach. <laughs> so this family were locked in the coach while we all traipsed off in, and I could just look, but I looked back and just saw this little kid with his, fin with his face pressed up against the glass. <laughs> hey, I want to go in the restaurant. They were just stuck in there, looking, I mean, absolutely livid, as you would be. But and, um, that, that's definitely a backhander. But we went inside, and it was extraordinary, because initially you had to pass through a souvenir shop yeah. to get into the <laughs> restaurant, Perfect. and he just, he obviously, it was catered entirely to English tourists, so there was like pictures of the Queen and Prince Charles on the wall, it was done out in a kind of mock Tudor style, it's absolutely extraordinary, I mean, I, I, it's just, it was almost, it was so bizarre, because it was so out of the way, did it come, did that come before the coach, uh, sort of scam, or did the coach guy, he knows it, is he a brother of his? I don't know how those things come about. But, um, but, you know, that it's, it's, it, yeah, do we do, is that going on in this country? Yeah, with French I'm sure and German it's, tourists? Yeah, I'm sure it is. Is it? Yeah, they say, I, I, yeah, I'm, sh I'm sure people say, look, look, if you bring 30 people to this restaurant, I'll see you all right. But it would, wouldn't it? If, you know, you've got your favourites. Because you don't have to, the, the coach driver's pretty much God on those things. Because those people don't know where they're going anyway. Yeah, but at least here, there's other stuff around. You don't really get that in the middle of nowhere situation in this country. Well, not really. Not if you're going from, uh, 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 London to Manchester. You could stop off anywhere. They don't know where they are. It, you, you know, there's, oh, there's places yeah. with nothing to do or see. It's that, well, there's, there's attractions, they're all, there's loads of in America, but there's a, there's a few here, like, you know, Sheep World, <laughs> and, uh, you know, you go out to Gloucester, and there's a town, it's got the biggest cotton reel in the world, and there's, that's it, there's a tourist <laughs> yeah, shop, a big cotton yeah. reel, and some bloke at the gate going, it's a quid to see it. There it is, right? I went to, um, mm. I know it's quite a big, I went to a Shire Horse Centre once. Yeah. But, I, when did Shire Horses become so... So popular that they got their own theme parks. Well, there's, I think I there's, mean, I think there's a museum for everything. Yeah, possibly. So. I, I, I mean, I don't think you, you could, you could think of something that didn't have a museum somewhere in Britain because obviously museums start off sometimes by fans. But this so, is, did people keep coming around going, I hear you got a shire horse? I'd love to see it. Yeah. Well, I can't, people come all the time to see my shire horse. You should horses. get another one because I'd probably pay double. <laughs> I'd pay good money to see your shire horse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> shire horses. <laughs> I know. Have you seen them? They don't do anything. They're not like monkeys. <laughs> no, they're, they're not like monkeys. 
is no. Creatures, but you look <laughs> at them in a picture or look at them in real life, pretty much the same thing. They're if not they, doing anything. If they could train a, a, a shire horse to swing on a rope and masturbate, <laughs> exactly. I'd pay double. You'd pay good money. I'd pay double for that. Yeah. There's a museum in Italy when, when we went there a couple of years back. Suzanne had a, like one of those little guide things. Museum there just for spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, they opened a restaurant. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean? interesting spaghetti, spaghetti in different don't shapes. Know. Don't know, didn't go. I went to see a big hole in the ground. <laughs> sure. Can't get enough of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, uh, but out of ten, then um, what? What would you give it out of ten? Well, all in all, food, fine. food, location, right. relaxation. You know, enjoyment. Yeah, that's, that's six. Okay, brilliant. six. Yeah. Next week, where are you going next week? <laughs> <laughs> You're not on holiday next week. Uh, going cool. away with Suzanne's mum and dad again. Five holidays. Play a record. That. You've got to put some work in. You're in your thirties now. You've got to knuckle down. Cheering breaks. Mind over money. XFM one hundred four point nine. I'm Ricky Gervais. Stephen Merchant. Little Carl Pilkington. Yeah, yeah. A couple of emails. Different people have, um, have visited various uh, tourist attractions. Oh, yeah. Uh, let me see who's this from. Uh, I'm not quite sure. But uh, thanks very much indeed for it. Uh, so, uh, there's a link here. It's apparently in Devon. Barometer World. Brilliant. Um, it's the world of barometers. It was established in 1979. And, uh, By one bloke who yeah. had a lot and yeah. thought, I can, I can <laughs> charge a quid yeah. for this, definitely. Here's the, Out uh, of his own house, probably. Converted back scuttle. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. not that's not a euphemism for a sexual <laughs> act. Um, but look at the uh, the web page here, Rick. There's a picture of a beautiful barometer being held by a beautiful lady. Lovely. Who's definitely his daughter. Yes. Definitely. Lovely. Come on, Kathy. Oh, that. <laughs> Dad, no. Come on. Get, undo your top a little bit. Dad, <laughs> definitely made to do that. Yeah. Oh. oh, that slight look of I hope no one I know sees. Yeah. Just check yeah. out Barometer World. Yeah. <laughs> barometer World. Yeah, that's available. You want to check that out? www.barometerworld.com. Now, the, uh... barometers. Now, do well. One, do they work? They have to do Two. with checking. Is it the the, the air pressure? Well, it, well everything. Air. But I, I think that's what it's based on, isn't it? Sort of low and high pressure. So it's going to rain. It's not going to rain. Yeah. Or going to be windy. Or but. I wonder how accurate they are. I think in the days before um, satellite sort of uh, weather surveillance systems, probably essential. Yeah. Nowadays, as essential as hanging some seaweed out by the back door. <laughs> probably. I think yeah. it's probably similar. I think it's the same one as holding a needle and thread over a pregnant woman. <laughs> if it goes clockwise, it'd be a boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about a barometer is how. Um, how far into the future can it predict? Exactly. How do you know? If it's a case of you may as well stick your head out the window to see if it's raining. Exactly. This barometer goes, uh, it goes, oh, it's gonna it'll be windy and rainy. When? The barometer goes, soonish. <laughs> yeah. So I can't say, but so it will, it will, well, within the seven days. I don't want to be specific, because you'll have me. Yeah. Yeah, you'll, you'll yeah I don't, but I mean, you know, I'm just a barometer, I'm not really, I'm not really <laughs> a can't weather person. The information. Yeah, brilliant. What, how, what's in there that's, uh, what's what happening? In there, what's what chemicals are being affected? How does it work? I've I no don't idea. know. I I assume it's probably something. Wait, let me email Barometer World. No, what I could it be? It could be quite it, interesting. It could be mercury that's based on a sort of temperature. It goes up with. Oh no, it's not temperature, is it, Barometer? It's pressure. Mm. So uh, it, it's it's probably just very fine. It's like a fine, very very fine needle, isn't it? This is almost as embarrassing as last time we were on. We couldn't figure out what the name of the leader of China was. Was it the King of China? <laughs> the Prince of China? Oh, uh, this is where we, uh, were trying to imagine what it'd be like if all the Chinese people at once jumped up and down yeah. and made a big tidal wave. Enormous tidal wave. But if you do know what the name of the leader of China is, we don't mean the name of the particular person in charge, but if it's a King of China, the Emperor of China, the, the Chancellor wait, of China, well, it the Prime Minister of China. Emperor, didn't it? That was Japan. Yeah, this is it. I don't know what's the big guy in charge. Is he still the chairman? I know Chairman Mao was important. I think he was just yeah. the chairman. I think he just governed all the big meetings. Yeah. I don't know. He just kept the minutes. Head Chinaman? Head Chinaman. The major Chinaman. Top, top, the top Chinaman. <laughs> <laughs> we're the number one Chinaman. We, uh, do you know what? We're going to be honest here. We, we know so little about China. <laughs> it's true. We know so little about China. Yeah. It's embarrassing. If you've got any interesting facts about China, 
then uh, email yeah. in ricky, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Also, I imagine, the email address to use if you're going to take part in this week's Rockbusters. I did raise an interesting fact. Um, I'm researching, I'm doing a show called Politics and I was researching yeah. and there's a thing about, um, uh, what, sweatshops. Yeah, no, no, no. Sweatshops, um, uh, l like, uh, Nike, uh, there's these facts, right? And, um, uh, th these, these people get, like, you know, a few cents an hour and the CEO, I forget his name, um, to, to, for a, a Chinese woman to earn his 5.2 billion, She'd have to work um, eight hours a day, seven days a week, for 10,000 years. <laughs> but Steve, they don't. They don't. They don't. They, they obviously don't want to. Exactly. They I don't want to. They don't want to. Lazy, lazy, Rick. <laughs> Ian Jury and the Blockheads, hit me with your rhythm stick. Rick, are you likely to be going to, uh, Cumbria on your, um, stand-up tour? Uh, almost certainly not. Why? Well, it's just because you might want to visit the Cumberland Pencil Museum. <laughs> um, that's the journey through the history of pencil making. I do like pencils. <laughs> really? Yeah, I just used one then. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Do you have yeah. any idea how that was made? Uh, no, was it? Let me email them. <laughs> um, now, Chinese people. Oh, incidentally, it's the premiere of, uh, China. The premier. A premier. Oh, right. Oh, right, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah, I remember now. Yeah. But, uh, last, when you were away, um, Carl, we worked out if, um, um, if there's one in ten people are sort of like gay in some way, uh, with a billion Chinese people, there's a hundred thousand little, uh, um, little gay lesbian Chinese fellas of some sort. What do you think of that? What do you mean? Well, if, I think, so, so, some sort of form of, uh, um, gayosity, whatever it's called, uh, is sort of like one in ten, right? One in ten people are gay, apparently. That's... Right. That does seem a bit high, though, doesn't it? I thought it was, I thought it was lower than that. What? You mean more than that? Yeah. I don't think so. Well, I, and I think that's of any sort of nature, anything. But what time did they do the survey on the streets as well? <laughs> Because, you know, they go out late, so if, if they're doing the survey sort of around lunchtime, forget it, they're not going to get any. <laughs> sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're all asleep. But if I had to say one in the morning... Well... It's going to be higher, isn't it? Yeah. Well, the thing is, you know Carl's favourite song, The Killing of Georgie? Mm. A little fellow, a little gay fellow goes out and, uh, he gets, um, beaten up and that. Carl went, yeah, but would it have happened if he'd have been going out at a decent time? True. But clearly in the lyric, it says, Georgie left the theatre before the final curtain fell. Yeah. Now, theatre's finished about half ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, even to give him half hour, I reckon it was only about eleven o'clock. So, you're talking rubbish there. Are you sure that wasn't his curtains in his flat and his clothes in them before he goes out? No, he was at the theatre. But I'll tell you what, I just realised something. Maybe where most people were going home after theatre, he was just going out. Exactly. That theatre to him is like a matinee. <laughs> exactly. Isn't it? Yeah. He's off out clubbing, isn't he? <laughs> he's off down, he's gonna get some ammo. He's yeah. gonna get a couple of butt plugs, yeah. and he's gonna, he's not even gonna start dancing till yeah. midnight, is he? Have, have any of us ever met any gay people? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I mean, our view of them <laughs> is, I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, email in if you've met a gay person. Yeah, yeah. Tell us yeah. where we, uh, where we're going wrong. Yeah. Have any of us ever met a gay I person? I mean, the way we talk about it is, it's like, yeah. have we ever met Chinese people? Uh... I've seen them. I've seen them out there wandering the streets, but I don't think I've ever. Now, it, now here's the irony. I definitely know and have met more little gay fellas than little Chinese fellas. Yeah. Have you ever had any little Chinese friends? There was a no. There was a girl at school who was Chinese, but she was kind of inscrutable. I couldn't, really, <laughs> couldn't get close to her. She was sort of mysterious. Right. Rockbusters. Yeah. <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> right then. This is where I uh, give you a little cryptic clue. And some initials, and it sort of makes up a band or an artist mm. and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of being the operative phrase. Yeah. Uh, Let's see how we read this clue. Yeah. This is going to sound like Oscar Wilde. <laughs> clue <laughs> number one. Three different clues. Clue Oscar Wilde was Chinese, apparently. Was uh, it? Yeah, it was legal then. Right. Will you leave the entrance to my garden alone? Sorry. Right? Will you leave the entrance to my garden alone? Are we back on the gay thing, or is this? This, this is, is the clue. Uh, that's the clue. Right. Clue for Rockbusters number one. Well, you just leave the entrance to the garden alone, will you? Right, that doesn't count because I know what it is. And what was, sorry, what were the initials? What were the initials? GG. Correct. 
Yeah, right, but you've got to pronounce the artist correctly. I'll pronounce the artist. Because I know what it is. Don't ruin it. No, Don't no, when, when the answer comes, I'll pronounce the artist. Right, can we just focus, please, on the quiz? Go. What was the clue again? Give it again. Will you leave the entrance to my garden alone? Not messing with it. Right? GG. G -G. Okay. Right? <clears throat> Next. Doesn't count. Next. Incorrect. Uh, don't phone, but you can send a message on my mobile if you want. Right? That's yeah. T. It's another little, little easy one. And, uh, the last one. We were sharing out the mail sheet. Right, that doesn't count either. Can we, we just fuck Nick? I know, what, I know what that is. I know what that is. I don't care. We'll come to that later. Yeah. And number three, we were sharing out the mail sheet, and I think I got the best one. Right? DG. DG. Yeah. So quickly again, will you leave the entrance to my garden alone? Yeah. I'm not messing around with it. Yeah. Right? GG. Yeah. Don't phone, but you can send us a message on my mobile if you want. Right? That was T. And the last one. We're sharing out the male sheep, and I got the best one, so that's good. Right? <laughs> DG. All right, Ricky Gervais at xfm.co.uk. Have we got any prizes? Uh, do you want to have a look? Well, don't worry about it. Oh, just this is don't worry pathetic. about it. Have we got any prizes? Just uh, look, the yeah, clues fine. are rubbish. The clues don't work. The show, it's. I mean, this is pathetic. Play a record. That's what it should be called, and the clues don't work. <laughs> <laughs> Blur, out of time on XFM. Well, we're not out of time. We've still got an hour left, boys. Hey! Luckily, brilliant. A lot of uh, emails, obviously, about the Chinese. People f as fascinated yeah. as we are. I don't want to discuss it, you know, interminably, Rick, because there's so much to say, and we've said most of it in the past. Yeah. Get a couple of emails. In fact, I think Carl, you told us this information. Remind me of it again. If all the Chinese people in the world were we're in a line on that, because there's loads of them, you'd never get to the end of it. Right. No, it's not that. It it's not. no. If all the Chinese people formed a line and started walking out of China, you'd never get to the end of it. That's what I just said. No, it's because though, um, the, yeah, but the, that, that, but they'd, that... Be, they'd be having babies. Um, you know what I mean? Still, it'd be adding to it all the time, wouldn't you? But would they be? Would they be walking and shagging <laughs> and <laughs> having babies as they're walking out? Yeah, that's that is yeah. That's I'd love to see someone organise that. Maybe the record breakers team. I tell you what, I'd love to see Ross McWhirter or Norris, whoever's who is it? Who's the one that's alive? I forget Norris, I think. Norris, right? I'd love to see him uh, to coordinate that. Yeah. A uh, one point two billion little Chinese fellas, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl. Yeah. And where are they walking out of China? Which exit are they taking? They're taking the through Tibet. Uh, or? I think it's the. I, I think it's the. Uh, Gate 9 Slip Road, the M43, <laughs> right. to St. Petersburg, right. right? And they go, and walking, <laughs> and shagging. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because some presumably are dying as they're leaving. No, but they live to 120. That's true. So... So they claim. So, yeah, well, we know Carl's theory on that. Do you yeah. want to just tell new listeners your theory about uh, when, these, the, when all these Chinese people get the records for oldest people in the world? Come on, what's your theory, Carl? Carl, Carl just, what... Just that they're probably lying. Why? Because... A lot of them don't age that well. Some of them do. A lot of them don't, and yeah. they always look older than they are. I read the other day, right? Do you know the one who was the oldest woman in the world, mm -hmm. right? Chinese woman, right? Yeah. Um, the way she did it, it <laughs> was. <laughs> she didn't die. That was a, that was a secret. Yeah. What she did, she got up every day and didn't die. No, no, she uh, she was like, <laughs> awake and that, and then she'd have two days just sleeping. Right. So she wasn't really that old. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, she'd only sort of lived half of her life in a way. Well, we so all live two odd. thirds of our life, don't we? No, but we'll... she she was like awake and that, and then she'd go oh, I'm out of bed, and then that'd be it for two days. Talking of sleeping, <laughs> uh, uh, oh man alive! I went to see the last part of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Why? Well, it's like a family thing now. Every every Christmas, we, my family and I have been going to see the Lord of the Rings, the next instalment. It's like a family thing. What will you do if they keep making them? Oh, I tell you, I've wasted now about ten hours of my life with that tripe. You can never get that back. You can back. never get that back. That's what Peter Jackson owes me. Ten hours now he owes me of my life. It is absolute drivel. Why well, I know. I, we've said this before, I don't want to harp on again about it, but I cannot fathom why everyone is so excited and loves these films so much. Like you say, people review saying it's the best film, film ever. ever. I think this is the greatest movie I'll ever see. And I don't... It's like they go on, but look at all the fight sequences. But Tolkien being up there in literature, like, you know what I mean? It's sort of like Shakespeare. Tolkien. No! No! <laughs> No, 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 no. But what is it that he's writing about exactly? I don't know. Little midget fellas who can't get shoes. 
<laughs> one I mean, I've got big feet. I've got size 14. I can get shoes. Oh, God. So but not know, from men, but I know, it, it is like, it's like, um, uh, 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 uh Harry Potter taken seriously. Yeah. But I know who's watching it. It's like these people who are watching it are obviously nerds. People who live in Forbidden Planet. They love it. They can't believe their luck. But it's that's like, the core audience, but it's obviously bigger than that. But then, but then it's also people who can think they have a go, like menopausal women thinking, well, I'll write a book then. <laughs> the, the, the Globlin came into the cave. <laughs> exactly. Right? And, and they're, and they're sort of like 13 year old sons who've never shown an interest in anything except glue now <laughs> yeah. writes orc <laughs> yeah, exactly. on his exercise book and so they're loving it it's like <laughs> yeah it, oh it's God. Like uniting bringing people together but at the end right i mean it's taken them now like nine hours to get from one part of middle earth to the end to the other end so they can get destroy the ring the evil ring uh. did they do a line was it i don't know what they what like they little chinese into. fellas and um it's taken them nine hours of their time and my life as yeah. well to get there and, uh, at the end, they, they all say goodbye. They do it in real it? time. Why oh. didn't they edit it? <laughs> oh. I mean, that's what it felt like. It really, <laughs> yeah. it can't have, it must have taken them less time, you know, within the sort of logic of the book to get there than it did for me to watch it. <laughs> and, um, at the end, they, they sort of say goodbye to each other and they all hug. So there's like, you know, there's little midget one, you know, Frido, Fr Frodo, Frida. Saying goodbye to you know Bjorn. What and are they called in the thing? Because uh, are they PC in it? Are they called like midgets and dwarves? No, they're called uh, hobbits. Oh, are they? Yeah. So we should call small people hobbits from yes. now on. That's what they are, just to make it kind of topical, and they'll like that as well. Give them sort of you know. So if you see a little on the way home, if you saw a little midget fella, four foot <laughs> midget fella, just call, say, "Excuse me, hobbit." Yeah. Okay, that's call fine him then. Frodo. <laughs> <laughs> Frodo. <laughs> He'd like it. He'd love it because everyone loves the Lord of the Rings. They love it. No, but everyone loves the, end, the Lord of the Rings. In yeah. the end, if you ever get to the end, they uh, they all hug each other. They say, "Well, basically, Frodo has to say goodbye to all his other little fellas," and so he's <laughs> hugging them. I don't know how many of them there are, and he's hugging them, right? And it is the most interminable thing I've ever seen. It's like the music's playing. They look into each other's eyes. He hugs them. He hugs. They pull back. They look at each other again. They're like, "We'll never see each other again." Then he hugs the next one, and the, I was just screaming. I was thinking, "Hug! Just one big group hug." Yeah. Then we can get out of like it. Like an American football team. Exactly. Just go, <laughs> yeah, yeah, knock Not heads. each individual one. Oh. I mean, it's dragging on God. and on and on. And apparently on the DVD, there's like an extra sort of 20 minutes of extra footage of scenes he's cut out. Who's what? watching this tripe? Uh, Who cares? I don't know. I genuinely, have we, I couldn't. Have we lost some of our popularity by slagging off Lord of the Rings? I don't care. Screw them. If you love it, if you, if you can't live without Lord of the Rings, screw you. It, I don't want you as a listener. I can't. <laughs> Fathom it. Really, really, it's not like being, I'm trying to be wayward or controversial. I can't get my head around the popularity. But doesn't Harry Potter annoy you as well, though? Yeah, but it's, at least it's kind of over in an hour and a half. Is it? I haven't seen it. But I went uh, to the toilet three times during the course of the film. Really? It's unbelievable. The woman sat next Sexy to me. Sexy stuff in it, was there? <laughs> <laughs> Some of those little pixies with the pointed ears. <laughs> it just took me back to all, you know, Mr. Spock. Oh. <laughs> All those glorious days. But, um, <laughs> oh, dear. oh, it really is just. I mean, have you seen any of them? You've not bothered. I've seen one, and <sighs> it was long, and I thought it was nicely filmed, and I thought, well, okay, I just get through it. I think I even think, it, you know, uh, it was just a list of oh, and here come the orcs. <laughs> exactly. Right. Okay, we see the orcs now. Yeah. But it's like people go oh, look at the amazing <sighs> fight sequences, the amazing immense battles, and it's true. He's got thousands of actors and stuff on horses. Brilliant. But I'm not impressed by good time management. No. Well done, he's got all those people together, he's orchestrated it, well done. But yeah. he's got, it's got to be more interesting. My friend summed it up, he said the Lord of the Rings films, they're like the film equivalent of an Enya song. Yeah. And that to me is exactly yeah, right. Exactly. Like the billowing dresses, <laughs> slow yeah, yeah, yeah. musical moments. <laughs> that's good. People that's riding good. majestically on horses. <laughs> Enya. Constantly oh. riding majestically everywhere. Dido's taken over from Enya in that well, so. I've got so. a confession to make. Go on. I like that latest Dido song. Oh, play it song. Let me I, just, I know, I, I know, I know, I know. I thought I'd never. I don't Rick, know what to say. On? Let me explain something to you about Dido. Oh God. Baby, come on, come on down. Biting bottles, Richard Ashcroft on XFM. We've had an email which I think I suppose puts my hatred of Lord of the Rings into perspective. It says, "Yeah, you may have spent ten hours of your life wasting." Uh, your time with uh, Lord of the Rings, but imagine how many hours of people's lives we, this show, have uh, wasted for <laughs> Yeah, that's true, yeah. I suppose it does, you know, balance. <laughs> Two right. hours uh, a week for <laughs> a couple of years. <laughs> we can never give that back to people. It's, it's, I know, it says it mounts up, doesn't it? Yeah. We should be doing some kind of community service for people, you know, maybe popping around. Well, this is community week. service, isn't it? Because Carl, it makes his brain work a little bit. True. And it, you know, it keeps him, keeps him, uh, you know, from going on holiday. <laughs> sort of for two hours a week, which yeah. is good. Uh, 
We, um, spent New Year's Eve together, me and Carl. Oh, yeah. It was me and Jane, Carl and Suzanne. Her hair doesn't really look like Dave Hill, I, I must, <laughs> I must confess. You didn't see it when it was done, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She had the coat on that you bought her to say sorry, though, didn't she? Yeah. And, uh, Martin Freeman and his girlfriend Amanda, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, 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 Glyn, and, um, we all went for a meal, mm -hmm. and then we all went back to ours, and, uh, sort of, um, saw in the new year and all that, and saw all the fireworks, and then in the wee hours when just the drinking seriously starts, we started playing parlour games, mm -hmm. and do you know that game when you go around, started off like with, um, pop bands or rock bands, you have to, uh, say a, a, a band, and then they have to come up with a band immediately, that starts with the letter that your, that your band ended with. Right. So, suede, E, erasure, do you know what I mean? Yeah, Go around. Yeah. We did that, right? And then we had to change that because people were sort of, using this, the, the same ones crop up. So I said, well, let's do animals. We were doing animals. And, uh, I gave Carl one. I think Carl panicked. So he had to go, do, do it quite quick. I want to just test it on you. Okay. Um. Is this bands? What, what is it? Uh, I said, now what did I say? Uh, so, uh, so, yeah, so it, basically I said an animal and it ended with E. Okay, so I go, I go, skate. Eagle. There you go. Yeah, but hang on, I think I was a third person. Right, so, think of another one. Uh, Hurry up. Eel. Yeah, I had that, yeah, I did that one. Alright. Right. Yeah, a lot of E's coming up, elephant. Yeah. Do you know what Carl said? Go on. Ready? Yeah. Egg. <laughs> <laughs> In a sense, I, I suppose. Went, Egg? He went, yeah. I went, no, wrong. He went, well, it, well, and then Martin came to his rescue and went, well, what is an egg? Animal, vegetable, miserable. I said, well, it's animal, but it's a, we can't have egg. But went, would well, you want a tadpole? Well, uh, yes. You yeah, because it's a larval stage. Yeah, no, but egg, you might as well have leg. <laughs> or eye. Uterus. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't count. <laughs> Egg, you panicked. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, I still think I'm right. Well, you're not right. No. We were we were naming, you know. It's a bit of fun, though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You mean, why obey the rules? It's exactly. Yeah. No, that, that is true. Don't bother that is the true. rules. That is true. You had the fireworks in here, did you? Yeah. What we, you had them yourself? No, you no, just no. no you could tell across the river. We could see them. But uh, actually, very impressive. And I'll tell you what, they got it right this year. Instead of two hours of letting off fireworks, people were going, oh, can we go now? It was three minutes, and they spent a million pounds on the three minutes. Yeah. And that's it. That's all you can stand, three minutes of fireworks. Oh. To me, fireworks are like watching Lord of the Rings. Exactly, absolutely. I've never been impressed as a child, never been impressed. I've never been impressed as an adult. But, a big bang, a huge big explosion, that'll do me. I used to go to, they used to have little community uh, fireworks displays at Christmas, things like that, near our school, maybe in the school or at the local kind of community centre. And I used to go along to them with the family and everything, get the sparklers, and they would have the fireworks, oh, and that would be, and I was just bored silly. And I always thought that if the guy organising it had wheeled out an enormous firework, yeah. climbed in, gone, last one to the moon's a bender, <laughs> and then shot off. <laughs> <laughs> that, I'd have been, yeah, that'd have been, oh, that'd be good, yeah. Oh, do you reckon I could take out that church? Yeah, exactly. Here? Yeah, get money on it, go yeah, on yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be worth it, wouldn't it? But little, zoom, another one, oh, Christ. So a friend of mine was telling me that they once had some indoor fireworks. Which apparently is just, I mean, imagine that, what, who needs indoor fireworks? Well, I think that's just little, yeah. I think w one of the things, we got indoor fireworks once when I was little, and I remember one of the fireworks was that little celluloid fish that you put in the palm of your hand. <laughs> of course. And he goes, oh, future. you're sexy. <laughs> yeah. What, it curled up because the heat of your hand? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. You're dead. It didn't curl. He, actually, it's granddad, he's dead. <laughs> yes. His hands are cold. Oh, no. That's the only way that that would be, oh, yeah. That's well, the only test. How long did you discover he was dead? We used one of those predictive fish, it came out dead. <laughs> yeah. Just flat. <laughs> yeah. Did you have a good time though, Carl? What, at your place? Yeah. Yeah, it was a good night, wasn't it? We danced, didn't we? A bit of a dance. What, the two of you together? Yeah, Amanda had got one of those, uh, DVD films. Uh, no, straight to, you know, DV a cameras. Camera. It goes right. straight to, um... DVD. Yeah, okay. amazing, right? And, uh, Carl was doing his moonwalking, I was sort of doing some sort of jazz step, wasn't I? Sort of like Michael Jackson. Uh, 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 uh. I ended up jumping up on the couch <laughs> with both feet and falling straight back on my back. Of course you did. I can't believe I was alright. Yeah. What's the chance of that? It's when you're drunk that it, you sort of like, you revert to childhood and you sort of bounce. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. So, uh, luckily. Is I that DVD gonna be available in the shops later this <laughs> week? <laughs> yeah. 
Track one, side one, the first Talking Heads album, uh, Uh Oh, Love Comes to Town. On XFM 104.9. Yeah. Well, I think it's Rockbusters' results, isn't Ooh. it? Okay. All right. Um. <laughs> Brilliant. Do you want the prizes, by the way? Not really. Not bothers? No. All right, some videos and DVDs yeah, and that, yeah, some yeah. good stuff VHS in there. VHS hype. Mm -hmm. Couple. Four ninety nine. Is that one TV about weather? TV titles. What? There's the weather one. That's gonna be on telly. Donald McIntyre. Oh, yeah. That's, that's in there, if you want that. Yeah. Um. He reckons Donald McIntyre ripped him off, cos he did a thing about how much it costs to, to have a chimp, cheap as chimps. What was the only thing you think someone ripped you off? Uh, Rockbusters. Ken, Some... Ken Bruce on Radio 2 is doing Songs of Phrase. He was doing that over Christmas. Was I said one week off, he's in there. <laughs> and when he heard that Donald McIntyre was doing a programme about wind, he thought he was moving on Auntie, Auntie Nora. <laughs> right. So, uh, the first one, uh, will you leave the entrance to my garden alone? Right? That was the cryptic clue. The initials were GG. Yeah. That was Gareth Gates. Gareth Gates. Gareth, Gareth. I, what, what would you Gareth, Gareth Gates. No, 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 right? no, but it's Gareth Gates, isn't it? So, why would you say to someone Gareth? Is that like a, what's that, a Manchester well, thing when you say Gareth? Gareth Gates. Gareth Gates, yeah, Gareth Gates, yeah, Gareth Gates, yeah, Gareth Gareth Gates, Gates. The, bloke, yeah. the bloke who came second in Popeye, but yeah, Gareth Gates. So that's the first what one. What was that about getting off the thing, though? Get, leave my leave my entrance alone though. I don't understand what it's got to do with leaving my entrance alone. The, the gate Gareth, to the garden. Well, no, not the gate's bit, but what's Gareth got to the do with it? The second one was, don't, don't phone, but you can send me a message on, yeah. uh, on my mobile if you want. Yeah. The initial was T. Yeah. Texas, right? Just... No, it's text. The word's text. Yeah, te so you'd have to Texas. say text, uh, me. Texas. Text, what do you mean? No, text me. What's that? The third one was, uh, we were sharing out the, uh, the male sheep and that, right? Yeah. Uh, I got, I got the best one. DG, right? We're sharing out the male sheep. Get to it! It doesn't work anyway. Get to DG. it. What is it? Delta Good Ram. <laughs> Delta Good Ram. <laughs> you were Delta Good Ram. Delta Good Ram. All right. So who's, who's the winner? <laughs> we're going to give it to uh, Stephen Gunning <laughs> from Tooting. He's got all of those right. I don't know how, but well done for him. And he wins um, some crap in a jiffy bag. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> you too, Alex Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Snow Patrol and Run oh. on XFM 104.9. Yeah, not bad at all, not bad at all. So everyone had a good Christmas though, yeah? Really, Carl, even though it was like a little bit lands of it was a nice Christmas. Yeah. Did what, you... what was the book you read, by the way? Someone just uh, emailed in and wanted to know. What was the book it you was, read? It was the governor. The governor? Yeah. Right, okay. Did you buy Susanna a gift in the end? Which she, you surprised yeah, her with yeah, on Christmas I did, Day? Yeah, after that show that we did before Christmas, yeah. I was walking home thinking, oh. Might as well treat her then. Yeah. Um, went and got her a, a necklace. Nice. Actually, uh, she said she wanted a necklace, but I didn't know which one, but went and got one. Yeah. And she was happy with that. Yeah. Um. <laughs> that shut her up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah. And did, did she, she get did you she something? Get you she did get me something, yeah. See, I knew, we knew she was. she would. Yeah, but the thing is, right, she got me a little Game Boy Advance to take on holiday, because she knows I get bored. Lovely. Right? So that, that was good, but I, I was like, like, hang on a minute, I know how much I spent. Oh, f And I know how much these are, right? But I was clever though. When I got to the airport, I bought to get me an extra, sort of, get to bought me an extra game, game for it. Yeah. Got the value. Of course. <laughs> are you, would, when you were growing up, did you wait to ask your mum for sweets right at the counter so the woman sort of would sort of embarrass her into getting you it? Uh, what, you mean just slip it in the basket? Well, no, just go, just wait, wait till there's some, uh, you know, a stranger watching before you ask for sweets. Mum, can I have a Kinder Egg? Did you see it in front of Suzanne when it got to the... Suzanne, can you get me something else? Because remember I bought, spent more on that necklace than you did on like Game Boy Advance. And the woman in Dixon's goes, oh, you better get him something else. She goes, oh, bloody hell, all right then. <laughs> nah. She, she did well, though. <laughs> you know I mean? She's done well to keep you, hasn't she? Because well. you're such a find. You're quite a catch. Yeah, you're, you're, she must wake yeah. up every morning and go, "Who? I am the luckiest girl in the world." Well, she told you that the other night. What? She said the other night how good it is living with me. <laughs> oh, yeah, I what? said to Suzanne, it must be great because I only see him two hours a week, and I like to squeeze his little head. You can do that all day, every day. Does she ever squeeze your head? No. 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 It's like that thing, though, isn't it? It's like when you work in a chocolate factory. You get sick of it, don't you? It's there all the time. Yeah, she must yeah. think, well, I could squeeze that head any time I yeah. wanted. It's not worth it. I just, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. 
yeah. like your Christmas. My thing. dad, uh, I'm wondering if you're turning into my dad, because uh, he, um, he bought my mum a bracelet. He won't mind me talking about this, because he said you'll probably talk about this on the radio, and you're right, Dad, I am talking about it. He bought my, my mum a uh, little gold bracelet, lovely, lovely gift, you know, it was a lovely thing, and I, she opened it, she loved it, and everyone thought, what a great gift, lovely gift. He wouldn't stop talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't stop talking about the gift he bought. He kept on grabbing my mum's arm and showing it to people, look at that, look at the gleam on that. <laughs> See, see, look at the shine on that. Look at the gleam there. <laughs> look at that. Gleam. And he, do you know what he said? He went. He said the great thing about that's pure gold. He went. It's an investment. <laughs> that's, that's an investment there. Because gold, oh, you know, it's always worth oh, something. Gold. I love that when people give you a gift and they go, it's an investment. But, I love it. But what? Not only does it take away any of the romanticism of it, but it was the way he constantly was talking about how great a gift it was. I'll that tell you what, I haven't, I haven't heard the word gleam for it's thirty kinda, years. Look at the gleam on that. The gleam. Look at that. Look at the sparkle on that. And look at that. And it looks like rope. That's what he kept saying. It looks like rope. <laughs> it's like gold rope. <laughs> and, uh, he just, and I know, I, I heard, he disappeared, we were opening gifts, he went disappeared, I could hear him in the kitchen going, thinking about that's, that's pure gold, that, Elaine, that's pure gold. Might melt, I might melt that down. Yeah. John, next door, <laughs> next door neighbour, John, look at that, look at the shine on that. That's great, that's brilliant though. But it's just, it doesn't, it sort of undermine the gift a bit, if you keep on drilling well, no, on about people, what it is. People, if people enjoy giving, that's nice, isn't it, and you got to, you know, what did your mum say? She well, it. she couldn't get a word in this way. <laughs> <laughs> That's a step up from a jar of coffee, though, isn't it? It is a step up, yeah. That's good. Oh. <laughs> what about yours? Uh, I didn't get my mum and dad anything this, this, this what? time. What? No, because I'm always treating them anyway. Whenever they, you know, if they need a few quid. Yeah. Well, them, you, you are the gift that keeps on giving, Carl. No, but don't just go giving anything just for the sake of it. You know what I mean? Wait for the t time that's right sort of thing. Just because yeah. it's Christmas. Because... <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, uh, yeah, there, there's no better time, is there, really? No, I just was going to say my mum and dad didn't get me anything, but they did. What did they get? But, uh, just some money. Mm. But, um, I'll, I'll get them something when the time's right, do you know what I mean? They always mm. need bits and pieces through the year, so. Yeah. I'll look after them. Sure. But, um, it was weird being away. Has anyone got a caught on to the fact that, you know, they leave groceries in the, in the telephone box near your dad yet? No, that's still going on. Is it? Going on, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic, isn't mm. it? That is just mm. fantastic. So when he needs a loaf of bread, a pint of milk, just goes down. Does he ever, does he ever give that as gifts? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Now listen, are we doing, uh, the film thing in a bit? Oh. Got more prizes. Yeah. Is it better than Rockbusters? Uh, it's alright, I did it in a bit of a rush because I was only in yesterday, wasn't I? Sure. Well yeah, if, if you take right? three holidays a year, then so. there's not enough time for the work. Me and Steve like to, you know, put our priority into, you know, doing the work, coming up with a good product, yeah. and getting a holiday when we can. You know, we haven't, I haven't, I haven't well, really. I love holiday, holiday, Rick. You know I love holiday. But yeah. I don't do the holidays for me, it's for Suzanne, isn't it? She's the one who likes going away. <laughs> with so you? I'll just go, yeah. So I'll go with her, do me bit. When you were playing Game Boy, right, and you looked in the hole, and uh, you were reading your book. What is she, what is she doing? She'll sort of she'll make things seem more interesting to me. Do you know what I mean? So like when we're at the hole and the bus driver said you've got an hour here, I sort of said why have I got an hour here? I go to a funeral with someone who I loved in the ground and don't spend an hour around it. <laughs> why do I don't wanna? Do you know what I mean? Why do I spend an hour looking in this? Wasn't that she'll... terrible when when you're out you just shot up in all this magma? Yeah. That was terrible, wasn't it? That was the worst funeral you'd ever been to, wasn't it? But she'll, she'll I'll say tell you that would make funeral's more interesting. If they just, it, it was a cremation and a burial. Yeah. You just put them in a volcano they and they go, two, three, three, here they go, wee, up to heaven. I was having a conversation with my flatmate about songs that would be inappropriate to have at your wedding, at your funeral. And horny, just, surely, is one. Yeah, was one. Was it horny, really? Yeah, that was the first one we came up with. I'm horny, horny, uh, horny, uh, horny. Uh, <laughs> oh, that was God. the first one we came up with. Isn't Robbie Williams' Angels one of the, um, Yes. Biggest And ones. I think Wind Beneath Your Wings. Yeah. I think is apparently quite popular. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, we'll play that on Artie Nora's. <laughs> yeah. <can't> you? <laughs> bit of Boston? Yeah. A bit of who? Busted? Boston. Boston. More Boston. than the feeling. Oh, yeah. Much more than the feeling. Boston. More than a feeling. XFM 104.9. Well. Another big moment here. We've had Rockbusters. Now we're gonna have, uh, Carl's film quiz thing, ain't it? Yeah, it's <laughs> film quiz thing. Um, I've done Planet of the Apes, right? Okay. Because one of the, uh, things we did in Lanzarote went on this tour with, uh, sort of three northern blokes. And 
They didn't really know what they were talking about. Joking. What You're you joking. <laughs> Northerners not know what they're talking about. You're having a laugh. No, they, they'd obviously sort of not had much luck here, right, and thought, let's go over to Lanzarote, buy some vans, right, get people in it, we'll do a tour of the island. Mm. And whenever someone asked a question like, what, when, what year did the volcano happen? They go, oh, we'll take you to the visitor centres, you can, you can read about it there. So they never actually answered anything, <laughs> right? So they were useless. But one of the things that they <laughs> told us was that Planet of the Apes was filmed in Lanzarote. Mm. Right, okay. Right. That makes sense. A bit of it. Well, does it? Does well, it make sense? Well, what do you right, mean, well, maybe does it? it was, maybe it wasn't. Okay, <laughs> anyway. No! No, I mean, if they wanted to show sort of an hour and sort of barren, sort of post-apocalyptic sort of subject, choose where you went on holiday. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah, but when when we were there, well, he took us to this sort of beach, and I said, is this, is this where they did it? And he was like, yeah. I said, what, right, right there, yeah. And I watched it. And I couldn't see where I was. <laughs> yeah, you know that if you watch a film from 1968 and you've been no, in the same no, no, place, the you're not going to feature, you're not, not going to see you in the back walking yeah. along the beach. It's a new one, new, new Planet of the Apes. Oh, the recent right? Planet of the Apes. Yeah, yeah, that's what they said, yeah. Right. Right, so I thought I'd sort of... Now that, that sounds a little bit more far-fetched. I would have thought that was probably a lot in Hollywood. Yeah. Well, well anyway, is this the current Planet of the Apes or the, the old one you've done? Current Planet of the Apes. This is the recent one. Alright, there'll be a question at the end of it, so... Listen to that. Mm. Is this entertaining to anyone, this? I mean, just, just take the last four minutes of conversation. But seriously, Rick, who cares? I don't. Do you? No. I don't. DVD's selling well. Exactly, what do I care? All right, come on then. All right, so, uh, Planet of the Apes, question at the end of it, listen and win some stuff, all right? <laughs> hey, where am I? What is this place? Hang on a minute, hang on According to the Lanzarote Guide, We've been dropped off at the, uh, at the volcano bit. Apparently there's 36 volcanoes here to be seen. I hope you don't mind my saying it, this is a waste of time. I what you mean. I don't know why they need 36 volcanoes. Just keep one. Fill the rest in. Like a car park or something. Excuse me, guide. What's, uh, why is the, why is the bus drops us off here? What's, what's so special about this place? Well... According to our holy writings, that is where creation began. Where the Almighty breathed life in the time before time. Oh, it's amazing that, isn't it? All this, all this has been studied for years and years. What about the coffee shop there? Is that, is that old, is it? Well... Well, nothing. You're out to rip us off. I rate it's about four quid for a coffee there. Always ripping people off. That's, that's what annoys me with these trips. You get us in the middle of nowhere, we die in a thirst. I'm not able to do without. The reason I've come here, I believe this is where they did, uh, Planet of the Apes, innit? Love monkeys. Especially the ones in Planet of the Apes, cos they, they talk and that. How can monkeys can't exist? I'm joking, aren't you? Of course they can. Getting up to all sorts of stuff. I read about a monkey the other day who, who worked on the railway. Right? There was, uh, there was another one about a chimp that did a bank job and, uh, went off to Spain to sort of- SHUT UP! What is that? <coughs> little monkey fella. <coughs> it's come from that little coffee shop. It's been serving coffee. Now that is worth paying four quid for. No, you're teasing him. I'm not teasing it. It's working, isn't it? It's serving the. T <coughs> we want some coffee. Get us some coffee. I've heard about this. You can buy. Uh, you can buy coffee that's been that's sort of hand picked by monkeys. It's like coffee, mate. Except it's it's more sort of coffee primate. Yeah. Hello, little fella. We want coffee. What do you mean, we? You're gonna have a coffee, aren't you? What else are you gonna do? Go and look at another 35 volcanoes. I'm staying here, I'm having a monkey coffee. It's brilliant. You find this amusing? Jesus, it's a talking monkey. All right, mate, have a couple of coffees. Don't start now. We're off duty. I'm starving. What do you mean you're off duty? Have you been on us later? Just get us a couple of... <laughs> <laughs> I understand that you're tired and you've probably been on your hands all day. Just forget the coffee. You go and get some lunch. After you've got some coach, you lazy ass. This damn human! Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Powerful. Uh, lovely. Oh. Excellent. So, uh, what's the question? Uh, if you've been listening to the whole show, <laughs> how many volcanoes do I think's on the 
Island of Lanzarote. Okay. Yeah. I might, I might, be, I might have it wrong, what sure. I've been saying, but it's roughly around that. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. what have you been saying? Yeah. Yeah. All Brilliant. Right. Uh, Ricky dot Gervais at xfm.co.uk. Uh, you're more likely to win the prize if you leave, um, your address on the email. Yeah. Because otherwise we can't really be bothered to phone people or email them back. So, Good point. Uh, put your address on there and you could win some crap. In a jiffy bag. Carl's theme tune there, by Placebo, Special Needs, on XFM 104.9. All right. New Year's resolution, Carl? Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't do it, really. It's more about something like, I don't know, start smoking. Do you know, there must be something. Uh, no, it's a waste of time, isn't it? I don't, don't, don't bother with that. All right. Any, see? Yeah. Me, no, I've never really made any New Year's resolutions. Just, I just be good to people. Just treat everyone as you want to be treated yourself. Mm. Give to charity. Um, hate, crime, racism, famine, sexism. I, I, I know you're going to keep to all those, except the give to charity. That's, we, me and Carl find that a little bit hard to believe. Never going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've always got to break at least one of your news resolutions. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, well, I think I'll be nice to Carl. What about learning more? I was thinking that. I want to learn more. I'm always teaching you stuff. I've, I've, I've got, uh, I watched, uh, uh, I'll tell you what, Christmas telly was dreadful this yeah. year. I actually, I don't know if I've hit that age where I think, but I think consciously I thought this is worse than usual. Yeah. And I ended up watching that Discovery Channel and History Channel mm. again, and I watched four episodes in a row of, um, this fantastic documentary, 1418 War, um, narrated by Dame Judy, uh, Dame Judy Dench. And it's brilliant. I just can't get enough of it. I hated history at school, and now I want to know everything. Yeah. And uh, uh, I think that's mine. Learn, learn all the s stuff about yeah, stuff. I, I like learning though. I yeah. always say that to you. I'm always looking up stuff. When I was on holiday, even though it was sunny outside and they had big holes to look at if I wanted to, <laughs> I stayed in and watched Discovery there and was watching stuff about scorpions and that. Yeah. What, what, what did you learn? Well, nothing. Cause it was all in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> But I just watched it. What, what I found ah! odd, right? What I found... Scorpio, it's a very good thing. It's only about poison. You get away. What I don't understand is with scorpions, right, um, they have like this, this sort of weapons, don't they? They have the poison and stuff, right? Yeah. Which can kill a man. Yeah. But there was a couple of little animals and that, that were its sort of enemy. Yeah. And it stung them and it didn't kill them. So what's the point? Well, firstly, not all scorpions kill a man. Some of them, they're- This one things, did, you said. Yeah, well, they, they, they range from, like, bee stings to so much venom it can take down a horse on- on things like spiders and snakes and scorpions. So it depends. But a scorpion that will kill a man would kill a rabbit. So I don't know what you're talking about. No, there was a snake that it stuck its thing into and some sort of beaver and they were just, like, <laughs> running about. There's nothing funny about that, so why are we laughing? <laughs> well, the snake wasn't running about, was it? Well, it was, it was slithering about a bit. Yeah. What was the beaver doing when just, the snake- just, It just sort of, I think it ate it in the end. What? At what? At the scorpion. It just wandered off. <laughs> well, it so wasn't was, a beaver! Well, there you go, There's you've no that. way it was a beaver! Alright, an otter. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> this is what you pieced together from a show in Spanish. Well, oh. I'm just saying though, how come it, it can't kill something that small, yet there's someone on holiday that's no sort of danger to that scorpion. We're not gonna harm it. Right? And yet it can kill a man. So you say, up, but Carl. I don't believe it. Shut up, mate. Seriously, this is gobbledygook. Taught you something again, though. That's what I'm no, saying. No, what have I'm you always... taught us, though? What is, what is that, what is the fact that's come out of that? A scorpion can kill a man, but the beaver was dancing with a snake, then it well, ate it. You do that that's all not the time, a fact. That's not a fact. Down. New Year's Eve taught him something, right, about, uh, dead people. No. Do you know what it is that taught me? I was saying you're talking shite. He says they found out your soul weighs an ounce. <laughs> your soul? Yeah. Your soul weighs an ounce. Right, who found this out? I read it. Your arsehole weighs an ounce. Yeah. There's no such thing. A soul weighs an ounce. You're talking to the devil. Right. <laughs> Have you got any monkey news? Um, so what do they do? They, they, they measure, they, they weigh someone who was alive and they were waiting for you to die then weigh you again. There was oh, someone, there was someone you've lost an ounce. Yeah, I'm sorry, it must be your soul shooting off to heaven. It was someone who was really ill and yeah. they said we can't do anything for you here but we've got a bit of a idea that we want to do. <laughs> Stuck him on some scales, he said, right, you weigh nine pounds and an ounce or whatever, because yeah. he was wasting away. He died, nine pounds. 
Right. Fine, well that's proof if proof we needed. Talking uh, shite. Monkey news, we might as well leave it. No, come on, no, come, come on, on, tell monkey news. No, there's, it, it's nothing, uh, that great, really. Is it worth playing the jingle? Quickly? Go on then. Oh, chimpanzee that, monkey news! Right, it's about a monkey. Four, 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 four. It's about this, this woman monkey who was born in 1834. <laughs> right? Half monkey, half woman. No. Not true. It happened, apparently. It was Impossible. In the, it was in the Daily Mail. All right? <laughs> okay. The Victorian ape woman was her name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, uh, I christened uh, this, uh, thing a Victorian ape woman. Well, we thought Sandra. No, I'm calling it Victorian ape woman. She was about four foot. No, didn't happen. She had lovely thick black hair on her head and on the back of her legs. <laughs> <and> her <arms. laughs> yeah. yeah. Alright. Save stockings. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, and she didn't need a bustle because of her huge ape-like ass sticking out the back of her dress. She was good at reading and sewing. Um, well, they, well, it was good because they didn't have opposable thumbs, so, uh... She could speak three languages. Yes. She, uh, was human, monkey, and monkey-human. Twenty offers of marriage. Does that annoy you, Steve? <laughs> Um <laughs> Ah absolute twaddle. All right, well, that let's... more rubbish than your soul weighing an ounce. Let's leave a it Victorian there, monkey let's woman. Leave it there, then. See you next week with some more twaddle. I was worried we wouldn't have the old magic in two thousand and four, but we're still talking shit. <laughs> Merry New Year. <laughs>